The year is 769 AD. The Empire of the Franks has been split between the now dead Emperor's sons. The Scourge of Islam has conquered the old Christian lands of North Africa and Spain. And in the harsh lands of Northern Europe, a new threat was rising. However, though no one knew that at the time, another important event had also occurred. A peasant by the name of Dalen Hounser had challenged the old kin of Kent to single combat for the right to rule the kingdom. Which, to everyone's amazement, he won. This is where our story begins. Before his reign even began, Dalen was already making a name for himself throughout Britain. During his coronation, Dalen shocked everyone by refusing to accept the title of king, like so many of us had before. He turned to the crowd. Has the title of king fallen so far that any man of a small keep and a few acres of land can claim it? I do not deserve such title until the lands and wealth truly befitting a king are mine to command. After the priest regained his composure and a hushed conversation with Dalen, the priest finally crowned him Duke of Kent. To send a message to all the petty kings of Britain that Dalen, a former peasant, just said he was better than all of them. After his coronation, his first decree as Duke was to rename the castle of Dover, as well as the lands of Kent, into the new lands of Kin's Harbour, just to find that one day a kin will rise from this land and he'll need a property to power to rule from when he does. Dalen then met with the local Jews and secured a loan of 300 gold for improvements to the castle. First, he ordered a small settlement be built around the formerly barren lands of Kins Harbor, then offered the housing off cheap to anyone who wished to move in. This brought much-needed skills and trade right to his doorstep. He then built a small militia training ground, and forced some of the newly arriving townsfolk in service for times of war. Finally, he put up a small palisade around the castle to stop attackers and the new peasants from marching right to his doors. With construction of his new capital underway, he then married his first wife, Adela. On his quest to bring in a skilled court physician, Dalen was told about a strange woman who was accused but never proven guilty of witchcraft. She offered to work for him for free in exchange for a simple vial of his blood. A strange offer, but considering he was already in debt and spending most of his money on improvements to Kins Harbor, he accepted. Not long after his new court physician arrived, she got to work on healing Dalen's wounds that he received in his duel against the former Lord of Kent. It soon healed, still leaving a scar, but that was fine. It would serve as a reminder of how far he'd come. Though his new capital was bringing in many new men of merit and skill, it also brought in men of crime and deceit. In the growing marketplace, fingers of St. John the Baptist were being sold ten for a box. The Bishop of Canterbury demanded that Dalen do something about this, and so he began cracking down on the sales of false relics. This began to give him a reputation as just, as almost everyone despised the trade. Now at the time, Dalen and the kings of Essex, Swiss, and East Anglia were all tributaries of the kin of Mercia, so when civil war broke out as nobles demanded more say in the running of their country, they were called upon to fight. Leaping at the chance to approve himself, Dale accepted. On raising his armies, however, he realized that they were not so keen on the idea of having this untested peasant lord lead them to their potential deaths. Dale leapt atop his horse and came to the front of the army. Men of Kent, on this day I promise you, under my command you shall never meet defeat! and great riches will befall all those who fight with me. And should any man here fall in pursuit of our noble cause, his ascension to heaven will surely be guaranteed, as no man who is willing to lay down his life in defense of his lord, anointed by God, can deserve anything less. Dalen and his men soon marched north and took control of the siege of the rebel stronghold of Gainsborough, which soon fell along with Lincoln and Boston. He then marched west to aid the combined Mercian armies in capturing the other rebel lands. During another siege, he learned that his wife Adela was pregnant, and gave birth to their first daughter, Sarah. He then received two pieces of news. The Aver dynasty had fallen, which is something he cared little for, and his wife was pregnant again, this time with his first son, Merrick. However, his son was born quite sickly, which is some attribute to the fact that he was born in his father's tent during yet another siege. Seeing this, Dalen begged his court physician Alice to do all she could to save his life. After a few days in her care, Merrick emerged better than he ever had been. 
The war would drag on without a pitched battle being fought. The Mercian forces would flip some towns, and the rebels would come in and flip them back. But in March 774, almost all the rebel lands had been captured, and they finally surrendered. After he returned home, Dalen began to make plans. Despite some minor chest pains, he began to press his claims on the counties around him. He declared his ashore claim on Sussex and once again marched out to war. He did send a message out to his lord asking for assistance, since he did just spend over four years of his life aiding in his civil war, but this was rejected. It is believed he was still a bit sore over the whole King comment made at his coronation. No matter though, as he marched out with almost 700 men to meet the armies of Sussex in the field. Here he showed the same skill and metal that won him the throne in the first place, fighting side by side with his men. He proved his bravery and routed the enemy army in the process. After capturing the castle, however, something unexpected happened. Apparently while camped out in the neighboring lands of Surrey, Earl Osmond died of food poisoning after one of his usual gluttonous meals, leaving his one-year-old son on the throne. On November 775, a peace was soon reached with the boy's regent, and Dalen became the liege of the Earl of Sussex, although at this point, he was practically the ruler anyway. In the following year, Dalen was once again at war, this time with his azure claim over Surrey. He defeated the Earl's forces in the field and laid siege to its castle at Lambeth. However, the defeated army made its way to King's Harbour, and for the first time in his life, it was Dalen's lands which were under siege. Dalen could not allow this, so the moment his flag was raised over Lambeth, he marched out at full speed back to King's Harbour. Fortunately, disease had broken out in the besieging camps, and by the time Dalen's army reached them, they were weak from sickness. By November 777, the war was over, and Dalen commanded all of his Dujour lands. On November 778, Adela died of cancer at the age of 26. She had given birth to five children, including the next in line for the throne, Merrick. Then something strange happened. Dalen married his court physician, Alice. He claimed it was out of love, but many at court believed she was responsible for giving Adela cancer in the first place. How? By using witchcraft, of course, and then using some sort of blood magic using the vial that Dalen gave her to seduce him into marriage. In any case, she was now the Duchess of Kent. One morning, Dalen was approached by his steward, who said he had a great idea on how to cement Dalen's rule as a great leader, as well as give him a bit of culture to the rather dull settlements of Kings Harbour. Dalen agreed, and almost a year later, he unveiled a large statue in the Market District. It depicted a life-sized Duke Dalen standing victorious after his duel with the former Lord of Kent. It met with a crowd's cheers and applause, and when the steward turned for Dalen's approval, for quite possibly the first time in his life, he struggled for words. At some point, Dalen awoke to the news that Alice was pregnant, but the only problem was that the dates didn't actually match up, and fearing the worst, he hired somebody to find out whether she was cheating on him or not. However, they found nothing. When confronted directly, she professed her faithfulness, and when the child was born, she did have his eyes. Now, if rumors are to be believed, her blood magic was becoming less and less effective at controlling Dalen, and fearing she might be put aside, she cast one final spell to hypnotize Dalen into having a child with her to secure her position. The girl was named after his former wife, and soon after, Alice died of dysentery. Divine justice, some call it. Oh, and if you're wondering who replaced Alice as court physician, Dalen found a miracle-working blind man who said he could cure any sickness and make men walk again. Yep, he sure knew how to pick him. Dalen was remarried in 783 to a member of the ever-famous Carlin family that held power on the continent. In 784, we hear the first instances of Dalen being called the Just, he also appointed himself the guardian of the now 10-year-old Earl of Sussex, and betrothed his daughter Juliana to him to try and ensure he would grow up loyal to him and the Howister dynasty. The next few years were proved to be rather uneventful, but in August 786, the old King of Mercia died, meaning that Dalen and the other kingdoms were no longer their tributaries. So in 787, Dalen declared his intentions to make East Anglia a tributary of Kent, and at the head of over a thousand men, he marched out routing the enemy forces at the Battle of Colchester and laying siege to their lands. In the meantime, Sarah came of age and was matrilineally married to a prince of the Byzantine Empire, and William the Blind was converted to Cathar, and was thrown in jail and promptly converted back. Peace was secured in August 788, and East Anglia was made into a tributary kingdom. In 789, Merrick came of age and proved to be almost as good a commander as his father, and was soon married. In 790, the ten-year-old Earl of Surrey was also put under Dalen's care. However, this did not last. On the 16th of April, 791, Duke Dalen died of a heart attack at the age of 44, leaving his realm to his 17-year-old son, Merrick. He died after having eight children. To his enemies, he was known as Dalen Copper Crown for the way he took the throne and refused to accept the title of king. 
To the people, he was known as Dale the Just for his crackdown on crime. But to the members of the Hounster dynasty, he is simply known as Dale the Founder.